Hello everyone! So I promised that I would try and do favorites videos more often. I really enjoy doing them. I really like recapping for myself what I was enjoying using, what I rediscovered, what was sort of trending with me over the last month plus. Some of these products will be repeat products, although I did try and cut back on some of the repeat mentions just so that it would be a little bit more interesting to watch. But if you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, please leave them for me down below and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. So I'm just going to start with skincare. I have two skincare items. Both are from Good Molecules. The first one is one that I mentioned last time, and this is the Discoloration Correcting Serum. This is the serum that is supposed to target hyperpigmentation and promote an even skin tone. I've been using it now since August. It is now the beginning days of November and I love this. I have the tiniest little bit left because I've been using it really consistently. I use it in the morning and in the evening. Sometimes I do opt for a different serum or something else, but this has been my absolute favorite. I have like this much, this little tiny bit left. Although, you know, it's, it, it has lasted me for a few months. That seems pretty common with skincare, especially something that I've been using so often. And I have been loving the way that it makes my skin look. I definitely feel like I use a lot less base makeup than I have been using because my skin has just been more even overall. There's many times when I will just put uh, like concealer, spot conceal, concealer, or just like a tiny bit of foundation um, in just certain places on my face. I don't feel like I need it all over. I do have kind of like an even layer all over my face right now, but filming is a little different than real life. But I feel like it has really made my skin look so much better. Yes, I still have the occasional breakouts and other skin issues, of course, but I feel like this has really helped the issues I had before and kind of keeps everything in check. So I don't have a lot of like glaring issues with my skin right now. I feel like it, this has made the biggest difference because this has been the thing that I've been consistently using. And if there are a couple of days where I don't use it and I've used other things, I have noticed like a little bit of dullness in my skin. So I feel like this is going to have to be a stable product for me as long as it keeps working. I am working with other Good Molecules products as well, but this has been the thing that has just made such a difference. And I just wanted to keep talking about it because I just feel like it has impacted the way that I've applied makeup as well. And I've been using, this is a little tiny oil, this, and I have been using face oil as well. This is the Good Molecules Pure Cold Pressed Rose Hip Seed Oil. So this says it's supposed to deliver natural vitamin A and help restore skin elasticity. Uh, I can't really speak to that. I don't know <laughs> if anybody has noticed any kind of difference in my skin, although it's probably really hard to tell on camera, especially with like all of the layers of makeup and lighting and everything. So uh, this is a tiny little bottle and I only use a couple of drops, like warm it up with my fingers and kind of press it all over. Uh, I've been liking it a lot under my eye area because I was using some uh, eye creams that just didn't seem to hydrate enough, but like gently underneath my eyes, like not like right up in the corners of my eye or anything, but right underneath, I felt like it was helping a lot with uh, some of those lines, those fine lines, and it was really just making my skin feel really smooth. So like my routine would be to apply this serum and let that sink in and dry. And the best thing is that this is not sticky or anything. And then once that has had enough time, I put the oil on and the oil is not like the sticky goopy kind of oil. I've used so many face oils and I used to really like um, like the Josie Marin Argan oil and various oils like that that I would just sort of slather all over my face. But one of the things I hate, I have a really strong aversion to sticky textures on my fingers. I've mentioned this before, like with glosses and things that I'd have to like apply with fingers. If I can't ever use a brush, I do. And that's one thing that has kept me away from certain skincare things is because I don't like the sticky feel on my fingers and I don't like the, it to stay sticky on my face, which is a problem I have sometimes with some skincare that doesn't really absorb in. Not the case with this. It absorbs in and things apply beautifully on top of it. So really these are like the two kind of staple products I've been using for skincare, rotating in other things, but these are the two. So like in the morning serum and the oil, and then I would go in with my primer and do skincare and everything else depending on what the situation called for and what I was doing, where I was going, etc. So there's always different products kind of in there, but these two have been sort of the staples for me and I feel like it's made a difference. And even just for me, just, just my own like sort of skin confidence, those products have made the biggest difference. 
a product I rediscovered and I've been using and probably because part of this, uh, I mentioned it in my project pan as well, but I've been kind of mixing various concealers and like moisturizers and uh, like liquid highlighters together to kind of create a base. Uh, occasionally I will just use this. This is the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer and I will put a few dots on places where I need it. So oftentimes it would be places where I put my color correcting. So I use pink color correct under my eye and green on red spots. So I put a little bit on top of those spots particularly and then like usually a little bit more around like my nose and mouth area. And I haven't even been needing much on my forehead lately which has been crazy. So it's gonna knock on wood for that one. But I would just use, you know, a few little dots on my face and blend it out and I just mean a few tiny little dots and really blend it out. And it is a concealer. It is supposed to be meant to be used for concealing, I guess. I think this was sort of like the Too Faced version of the Tarte Shape Tape. I don't really like using this like thickly under my eyes, but I've never been really a big under eye concealer person since I started color correcting because it's made the difference for me, but just a little bit, just a little bit to blend out just to kind of, you know, really even out my skin for from the color correcting underneath my eyes because of those those dark circles and then like the few little red spots that I have on my face so it's what's worked for me and I'm glad to rediscover things and to be able to kind of play with some of the stuff that I already have so some of these things like I said rediscovering um let's talk about well I have two eyeshadow palettes uh, I'll start with this big one, I guess. This is from e.l.f. So this is the Retro Paradise eyeshadow palette. This is so beautiful. It took me by such surprise. I really have been so judgy about eyeshadow formulas everywhere, but especially the drugstore because my history with them has been not great. And I haven't tried anything for a while, but I was really just basing my opinion off of what I tried in the past. So I have a makeup fairy godmother, shall we say. She is such a wonderful, amazing person, such a good friend. And she has sent me a few things over the last couple of months. And this was one of the things. And I couldn't believe it. The first time I used this palette, I couldn't believe it. And this has been one of the palettes that I reach for on a more daily basis because it is inspiring. It has those gold sort of shades that I really love. It has those like beautiful orange tones, which I like, but it also has some blues so I can have a little bit of color in there. And it just makes really simple, easy eye looks. Right now I have this shade, uh, which is Pariso all over my lid. And it honestly, I'm not just saying this, it gives me Natasha Denona vibes. And, I, and that's my benchmark for everything. And I know you're probably thinking like an elf eyeshadow. Okay, right. But this is the shadow. Like this is applied just a finger swatch. Like my, my there's no primer on my hand. My hand is not wet. Like I'll just, I'll, I'll do a live swatch like right here. My, my hand is not, the back of my hand is not wet. There's nothing going on there. You know, it's just, this is how beautiful this shadow actually is. It blows my mind. I can't believe it. And there's a bunch of unique shadows in here. Okay, so I swatched a couple of the matte shades and a couple of the more like shimmery shades in this. I did swipe, swipe, well swatch and swipe Pariso twice there. But even the mattes are good. Like this is, it's usually like, well, you know, the shimmers are good and usually like most brands have good shimmers, and if they're not good, you can make them work with glitter glue, with Fix Plus, with whatever. I don't need the Fix Plus, I don't need the glitter glue with these shimmery shades, and the mattes, they aren't chalky, there's not a lot of fallout, they wear really well. Like, I'm constantly impressed, like, I can't get over how beautiful these are and like if I feel like if it was some sort of like a blind te uh, testing I know you can't it's not like the same thing as like doing a coke versus pepsi thing but like if I was looking at the swatches on somebody else's arm and I didn't know where it came from like I never would have guessed this was an elf eyeshadow palette so I've been very impressed with this this is what's on my eyes right now with a little bit of a kaleidos highlighter just kind of like on the outer portion of it but mostly it's this palette. I used the orange and I used the white sparkly shade and I used the Parisa shade and I think I used a little bit of spice the red as well. But I just really wanted to share this palette because if you've been sleeping on drugstore stuff and you've been thinking because of past experiences it's not that great, think again. Because on that note 
e.l.f. has these beautiful little bite-sized palettes. They actually are called bite-sized eyeshadow palettes. They are really beautiful little color stories for shadows. I have a bunch of them. Um, not all of them are great, and not all of them, it doesn't mean that they're not good performance-wise. I mean that the color selection isn't great and there's just too many repetitive tones in such a small color story. I want to see more unique things. Cream and Sugar has been one of my absolute favorites. It's very simple. You know, you have a matte brown, you have a matte beige, you have sort of like a, a champagne-y, like pale frosty gold, and then you have more of like a bronzy, kind of like a little hint of orange in there as well. I love this. I've been using this a lot, this specifically. Um, this this shade right here is beautiful. And again, not a shadow that like I would have expected to be from e.l.f. Again, no primer, no fix plus, nothing. This is just what it looks like and it is beautiful. So it makes for very easy, simple eye looks. I like to do like um, a brown outer corner with the, you know, champagne -y gold shade and like a brown lip or a nude lip if I'm wearing lipstick or even just some sort of gloss and it's great. So I really wanted to plug that one. These are like three bucks, I think. I can't get over how good those are and I'd love to see more because I really love the direction brands go in with smaller eyeshadow palettes. Like the Retro Paradise palette is a much larger palette, but it does have such a good color story that I feel like it's easy to work with and it's not overwhelming. Like that's the problem I have with some larger eyeshadow palettes is that it's too overwhelming when you look at it or not everything really goes together. You kind of have to like pick things apart. This, you can create full looks, many looks that look very different with that palette, which I think is important. Uh, for face products, I have a handful of things, some rediscoveries, some previously mentioned favorites, some new things. Uh, I have this RK by Kiss. This is Dare Blusher Sweet Cheeks Palette. This is one of those um, drugstore brands. I believe you can find this at drugstores in the US, like Walgreens and CVS. Um, I'm putting this in my favorites because of this shade right here. This, I wasn't sure what to do with it when I first got it, because I was like, well, mm, I don't know if this is gonna work for me, if it's gonna be too dark, is it supposed to be a highlighter? Don't know. And then I just was like, okay, like I have to do in some situations is just Put it on my face and see what happens. This is the blush on my face right now. It is such a beautiful bronzy blush and it took me by complete surprise and I'm glad I just went with my gut. It's gonna be hard to get a swatch of this I think because it's not like an eyeshadow. It, it does have a little bit of like a, a shimmer to it so it could definitely be used as a highlight for darker skin. For me I love it as that sort of bronzy kind of blush shade and that's what I love pairing especially with like a more brownie neutral eye like a, this like the cream and sugar bite size palette with that as a blush and like a brown or like a beigey lipstick simple classic easy to use I do like the other blushes as well but when it comes to more like colorful vibrant blushes I've been really liking the likely makeup um, clown and fairy blush palettes but I, this is a standalone shadow why do I keep calling everything a shadow? This is a standalone blush shade for me. And again, I don't even know if it's supposed to be a blush, but that's how I use it. I'm never gonna stop talking about these. I'm just not. These are the Kaleidos Lo-Fi Duo Blushers. Uh, we have Rose and Peach. I love the packaging. I love the packaging so much. I love these blushes and these insane highlights. Um, I'm wearing a different Kaleidos highlight right now. This is Mars Melter, I believe, but it's so new to me that I didn't want to throw it into a favorites. But I've been using these a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. In, in almost every video, and in almost every Instagram post, if I'm not wearing the super iridescent duochrome highlighter shade, I'm wearing just the regular blush shade because they perform so well. They're such great neutral colors. They don't compete with things, yet they're very pigmented. They blend out very well. I'm just, I'm just a huge fan. I'm a huge fan. I, I have zero complaints and I just want to keep talking about it because they're those products that make me happy. Like I can even just, I can see it in my face. I can hear it in my voice. It's just products that make me happy to use, happy to hold, happy to look at. So I just had to mention them. For highlighters, other highlighters, I have two rediscoveries from things that I've been using recently, which is one of the Becca Light Chaser highlighters. This is Pearl Flashes Gold. So 
Pearl was always one of my favorite, favorite Becca highlighters. And Pearl Flashes Gold is beautiful because you can definitely make it really dark, stark, like gold stripey kind of highlight, which is what it would look like on, on fair skin. Or you can blend it out a little bit more and you really have that beautiful reflect of the, the gold and the pearl shade. I feel like it works really well, especially when I pair it with more of a warm golden eye, because a lot of the times I like more of a silvery sort of lighter, more cool toned highlight, depending on what I'm doing. Sometimes even with a warmer eye, I like the cooler toned, but sometimes I just don't like more of a silvery, pearlescent highlight if I have a really warm gold eye, which is one thing that I really love. I love gold eyeshadow so much. I love gold. And with a gold eyeshadow, like gold, metallic gold everywhere, and then like a pearly highlight, I don't really like the way that that goes together. So I like to mix in just a little bit of gold with it. And this has been a great rediscovery because it works so well. And then I've also rediscovered from MAC, soft and gentle. Do we remember this one? Mine is like pretty well used. I'd love to hit pan on this someday. I'm not gonna make it a project. I'm not gonna make it a promise. I'm just rediscovering this beautiful soft and gentle OG highlight, this beautiful like soft champagne shade. Probably not even gonna be able to see it very much here. It is really subtle compared to the more blinding, iridescent, show-stopping kind of highlights. But again, for very neutral looks, it works very well. Or when I just don't want anything to compete. Because sometimes I have a lot going on everywhere. And sometimes it's fun to have like the eyes, the cheeks, and the lips all flashy. But sometimes I just want to focus on one thing or the other. And this is a really good neutral highlight that doesn't compete. So I'm glad to have rediscovered this. A boring, a very boring favorite, but a favorite nonetheless, is a black eyeliner. This is from L'Oreal. It's the Matte Matic Super Liner Intense Matte, Intense Black Eyeliner. It's just one of those twist up black eyeliners, but I've been liking it a lot because I find like it doesn't transfer, it doesn't bleed. Sometimes with those sort of creamy black eyeliners, they like transfer out of my waterline, which is where I normally tend to put black eyeliner. I haven't been like a heavy eyeliner user that much these days, but I like to tight line with it. And because of tight lining, it can, you know, cause your eyes to water. And if it does smudge and get it all over the place, this uh, is as good as the Pixie one I used before, which is like the Pixie waterline one. Um, I really enjoy using this. I just find that it's really a really good solid black eyeliner and it just I know it's not going to let me down when I use it so that's why I keep reaching for it because I know I'm not gonna have an issue with it. I've rediscovered my MAC lip liners just lip liners in general I've been really enjoying overlining my lips if you couldn't tell it's just a thing I'll probably look back on probably sooner rather than later and be like what was I thinking but for right now I've really been enjoying doing it and uh, specifically um, with more neutral colors not just bolder colors, um, Boldly Bare and Spiced are two that I've been reaching for a lot, which I'll overline and either put like a nudey, beige kind of lipstick on top of it, or even like a brown lipstick. Uh, it's just a really good foundation to help kind of give me that outline that I've been liking. Because I have been, I have been liking a different sort of lip shape. And in a lot of videos, you've probably seen me use this color. I've been wearing purple lipstick a lot. This is a liquid matte lip color from Wet n Wild. This is from a special collection they had. Um, can't remember the name of it. It was like an anime, like Hello Kitty sister collection. Um, not like the characters are sisters, but just the same sort of family. Um, but this is Goth Girl. It's a deep purple lipstick. I've been really loving the purple lipstick. I really love the way that it looks when I overline with this and even just using this to like create that different lip shape. I really love it. Yes, I'm wearing red lipstick today. Who am I? I was channeling some AOC. I finally was watch. I was watching so many videos and so many things of her speaking that I finally was just like, I want to wear red lipstick. I want to wear a blazer and I want to wear a li red lipstick. This might be my red lipstick, but anyway. Purple, yes. And the last two things are lip glosses, also from the same collection from Wet n Wild. Uh, it is Lil Miss Punk and Oh My, which is sort of like a pinky glittery shade. And this is more like iridescent purple. So I've been using these a lot. I have used the iridescent purple on top of the matte purple lipstick as well. And I really enjoyed this 
this peachy pink lipstick or lip gloss um, just as a little bit of shine it also looks really cool over those lip liners that i mentioned as well so i forgot how good wet and wild products are like i really i really forgot how good they are i love the packaging i think it's adorable like those 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 little characters are adorable um my melody and karomi I'm butchering that, I'm sorry. Um, I, I haven't been involved in that universe in a while, though I used to really love Hello, Hello Kitty. I used to really love that show when that was on TV. Sidebar. Okay, um, but it's just adorable. I love the size of the packaging. I love the formula. It all works really well. I have a good time using it, and that's what the favorites are all about. Like, I really just wanted to talk about things that make me happy to use, that really just bring me joy and these are the products right now that make me happy and that i have been loving to use especially over the last couple of months and i'll be interested to see what the next the next month plus brings but anyway let me know if you have any questions comments concerns let me know what are some of the things that you've been loving this month i would really love to hear from you thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today i really truly appreciate it i hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are stay safe I hope we get a chance to chat soon. Bye for now.